All right, so far we've done the center of mass of a system of particles. Now let's talk about an object that's not particles, but made up of objects of uniform density. Okay, so let's say we had this U-shaped object, and it was made out of rods. I don't know, metal rods welded together into a U-shape for some reason. Maybe it's a staple that's been broken. I'm not really sure what it is, but let's just pretend that it exists. So I've got one side is a rod of uniform density where the whole thing has a mass of four kilograms. The bottom side has a mass of five kilograms distributed evenly along the whole length and this short side has a mass of 2.2 kilograms. Again, the mass is distributed evenly along the whole length. So you might be thinking, well the only equation I have is for particles, so what do I do with this? Because it's not a particle, it's stretched out all over the place. Here's where we go back to the qualitative definition of center of mass. So I know that if I have an object, I can pretend that all its mass is concentrated at its center of mass. And if an object is symmetrical in its mass, then the center of mass is just simply in the middle. So if I just look at the pink part, the pink part I said was, um, the mass was distributed evenly. So its center of mass should just be in its middle. In this case, the rod is 10 units long, 10 meters long, so the center of mass should be five meters at five meters. So like right, come on, right here, okay? That is the center of mass of, of rod number one. I'm gonna call that center of mass number one. In fact, I should put, oops, let's, let's do that. Let's call it, no, oh, come on, I need a skinnier marker. Okay, center of mass number one, one. It looks like an eye if I do it, do a funny looking one. Okay, one. For the blue rod, again, the blue is, um, the blue is, the mass is evenly distributed, so the center of mass of the blue one should be in its middle. It's 10 units long, so the middle is at five, right there. So that's center of mass for object number two. Center of mass for object number two. Uh, two. Okay. And then the orange rod, again, the center of mass is distributed, or the mass is distributed evenly, so its center of mass should be in its middle. It goes from zero to six, so its center of mass should be at three, right here. Well, that's Eh, coincidence, the center of mass number three, ooh, whoops, don't talk and think at the same time, um, is at three. Okie dokie. Now you can pretend that all of the mass of the pink is here. Hey, that's a particle. It's this one little spot with all of its mass, so that's a particle. You can pretend that all of the mass of the blue is here, so I have a particle of mass five, at this position. And I can pretend that all the mass of the orange is here. So what I have is a particle of mass 2.2 at this location. Now I can treat this like a system of particles which I already know how to do. So the x component of the center of mass is going to be the mass of number one, so that's four kilograms, Oh, you know what? Color code. Always color code when available. Four kilograms times the x coordinate. Well, it's at x equals zero, so x coordinate is zero plus the center of mass of the second particle. That's a parenthesis. Um, that's the mass of the center par center particle is five kilograms times the x-coordinate of that particle, so that's at um, th four, five, it's at five. Ha, coincidence, not always that way. Wait. Okay, plus the mass of particle number three, which is 2.2 kilograms, times the x-coordinate, that's 10, okay, all divided whoop, by the total mass. The total mass I have is four plus five plus 2.2. .2. Okay, so the x coordinate of the center of mass of this 
bent staple thing, whatever it is. See, that's 0. I've got 25 plus 2.2 times 10 is 22 divided by, let's say, 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 2 would be 11, and then 0.2, so 11.2. Okay? And if I do all that out, I get um, 4.196. I'm going to round to, let's see, I've got two sig figs here, so that would be, uh, it'd end up being 4.20 if I round it properly. Meters. Okie dokie. Now I do the x, or the, sorry, the y coordinate. Same idea. Y coordinate of the center of mass is going to equal the mass of the center of mass times the y coordinate of the center of mass of the first object. So that is 5. Come on. Plus the mass of the center of mass of the second bit is 5 kilograms times the y coordinate of the center of mass of the second object. So that's, um, well, that's 0. It's on the x axis. Okay. Plus the mass of the center of mass of the third object, 2.2, times the y coordinate. So that would be 3. Okay. Divided by the total mass. I already know the total mass is 11.2, so I'm going to skip right to it. And so what I get is the y coordinate of the center of mass. I get 20 plus 0. I'm just going to leave it out. 2.2 times 3 would be 6.6, .6, all over 11.2. And if I do that, I get, um, let's see, 2.375 rounded properly to two sig figs. I would get, nope, oh, come on, wake up. There it goes. 2.38 meters. So let's do a little check. Um, if I plot that, I've got x coordinate of 4, there's 4.2, and a y coordinate of 2.38. It'd be right about here. Whoops, come on. Wakey, wakey. Nope. Right. Wait. Ah. Come on. Oh, it never wants to switch color for me. There's a button on the pen I use for this that's supposed to give me the color switching options, but I, I don't know, it never works. Okay, so the center of mass of the whole thing would be right about here. And just do a little check. Does that make sense? Well, it's fairly well balanced. Um, it kind of in the middle of everything. That looks pretty good. Remember that lab we did today with the cardboard cutouts? Um, it's not completely perfectly in the middle because the masses are not the same on either side. Whoopsies. In fact, looking at it, I already know that it won't be perfectly in the middle because I've got only 2.2 mass here, but 4 here. So I know it's not going to be in the middle, but shifted more to the left. I also know that it should be, well, it wouldn't be over here or something. So just looking at it, it seems it, I mean, it seems right. So that's a, just a good a little check. Um, if I had, say, a three-dimensional object, I would do the same thing, but I'd also do the coordinates in the z dimension. 